So now we're going to uh, move on to um, fitting the coupling rods, left and right. And um, the first thing that we need to notice is with the coupling rods. If I pick one up, you'll see, um, if I bring it up to the camera, you see on each end there's two lugs, two lugs on one side and one lug on the other side. And the side with the two lugs needs to be upright. It just needs to be facing upwards when it's fitted to the locomotive. So how are we going to do this? Um, what we also need uh, is um, the... the short uh, crank pin for the front. The rear one has obviously got already got one fitted. And um, between the crank and the rod um, there is a 5BA washer fitted so we'll put that on first to the rear we'll put the crank on uh, sorry the coupling rod on and then this is the tricky bit the short crank pin goes through and then we need another 5BA ring and now we need to fit it to the front crank. Okay, so we're going to keep moving that on like that. Okay, that's now fitted. We'll just give it a slight tighten with the spanner. just nip it. Okay what I like to do now, what I'm going to do now is just we have to check for, for to see whether it's binding or not so I'm just going to roll it and it bind, binds in that way, in that position. This way is okay and it just binds in that position there. There. So um, with the crank, I'm just going to turn the chassis over so you can see it, with the crank with the crank facing forward, it's binding there. So what we need to do then is remove slowly. We need to take this nut, the uh, the uh, short crank pin off, and just take a look at where the hole in the crank pin is in relation is where the hole is in the connecting rod is in relation to the crank pin. So I'll just do that, take the crank pin off, just remove that guy and I don't know whether you can see that, let me try and move it up to the camera no it's going to be very difficult, either way it's not completely centered here in this particular part here, I need to remove, I need to elongate this hole so it's not binding anymore. So I'm going to take it off and then with a, uh, a round file slowly elongate this hole and then keep fitting it backwards and forwards, take a little bit of a time just take your time with it until um, the wheel rotates uh, without it binding. So I'm just going to remove a little bit more here, see if I can do that. Just a little bit of a time. That's all I'm going to do. And then refit it and check it again. Okay, so I've finished um, adjusting the coupling rod hole. Put it back together. And as you can see, it's free running on this side now. So I'm happy with that, so I'm going to do the same with the other side and fit that one on. Alright, so we've got the coupling rods fitted on both sides now. And as you can see, it works just fine. Free running both sides. So that means we can crack on to the next stage. So the next stage of the build is actually um, fitting 
the steam cylinders left and right uh, to uh, to the chassis. Um, the instructions say um, that the exhaust pipe should be bent slightly forward and upwards so I've just moved it like that for now and uh, the mounting is actually there's some tap two tapped screws two tap screws here in the side of the cylinder block and then it's actually uh, hexagon headed screws with um, washers that, uh, that that fix it in place so the idea is that we're going to put it against uh, mount it on the on the chassis put the uh, put the screws in and the idea is uh, to make sure that the cylinder block is parallel to the chassis frame so it has to be parallel so it's not like that and not like that it has to be parallel so let's go ahead and do that so I've just got the one in loosely just going to put the other one in now if it will stay on the allen key try again but we've got it let's put the screw thread in so put it on loosely let's see if we can give you a better view of that there it is look see the two allen keys there there they are so I'm going to tighten them up again a bit more so make sure it's parallel and then I'll tighten it up a bit more so there's the one fitted parallel you can see the turn it around so you can see there you see the the hexagon uh, screws holding the cylinder block in so we'll do the same with the other side now so just finish off tightening these screws be careful of course because it's a brass casting so I'm deliberately holding the allen key not at the end but halfway if you see what I mean so I'm not exhausting the absolute tension that I could do on the on the allen key there's one just a teeny and this one teeny okay so what I'm going to do looking at it with the eye it looks parallel but I'm going to measure it using uh, this uh, ruler I know it's plastic but it's good enough eighteen and a half mil eighteen and a half mil other side Another quick check. They're on there now. Both sides. Okay. Okay. The next uh, stage is um, to fit to fit the valve chest on top of the cylinder, and uh, for each of the for each of the uh, cylinders at this stage you have the, the following components here's the valve chest and here we have a valve chest uh, o-ring cover plate two of the four screws here's the slide valve and this slide valve is going to be situated inside the valve chest and this valve nut is actually going to be located into the center of the of the slide valve there so um, and there's a I'm gonna uh, fit it according to the instructions and uh, I hope you guys can see it
So the first stage is to place the slide valve in the centre of the cylinder so it's covering uh, the three holes in the middle like that. Next stage is to place the o-ring on top and the o-ring is actually going to fit this is the other side, it doesn't matter they're both the same it needs to fit in that groove there but when placing the valve chest on we've got to make sure that the o-ring is in the right place but also the flat side the flat side of uh, of the valve nut is located actually into the slide valve so let's give this a go and see if this works out okay looks and feels about right can't see the o-ring coming out on either side I'll just try and get a close-up view with the camera so you can see it hang on a second the valve is in the center in the center of the valve chest the valve nut is showing the round side and I can't see any part of the o-ring showing so it must be in its uh, in its located right and so we'll go ahead and uh, fit the valve chest. Now what Roundhouse was saying with the valve, with the cover, I mean, with the cover is we only, we fit it so it's actually um, facing outwards and just fitted by two screws temporarily. So um, we can adjust the timing by seeing the valves later on. So let's go ahead and do that. If you look at the plate, it's actually got a, because the screws are countersunk, screws are countersunk there's a countersunk hole with the countersink in it and the other one hasn't so make sure you put it on the right way around so we'll go ahead and fit that okay very lightly the other one as well the other side So I've just pinched them, just pinched them, nothing more. So there's the one side done. Let's have a look down here. Yep, starting to look like a steam locomotive now. Okay, now I'll uh, crack on and do the other side. So there we are, we have both the cylinders steam cylinders fitted, the valve chest uh, half finished let's say um, slide valve and it's all the associated assembly fitted valve covers fitted half on half off as per the instructions and uh, I must say they're starting to be becoming a bit of weight in the locomotive now which is a good sign and uh, we're ready to crack on with the next one